Hello, and welcome to the June edition of Six Questions from the Internet with Kate Campbell. I'm Hunter Kelly, and y'all have been showing up with some great questions. I hope you've enjoyed the questions that have already been answered. I Me think they have. Me or them. <laughs> you're talking to me if I enjoyed it. Well, the Kate, you know, it's just you're you're really opening up and being vulnerable, yeah. and that's what Brene Brown says to do on her uh, Netflix does. special. Yeah, Brene Brown. She's yeah. cute. My dear friend Deborah, she loves Brene Brown. She introduced me to Brene Brown. She's mm-hmm. pretty fantastic. Okay, good. Yeah. We're, so we're going to open up today with some more questions from the internet. Our first one is from overseas, from Mill Bailey. She wants to know, do you have plans to visit Northern Ireland Ireland in the next couple of years? So you are going on your Ireland uh, tour again, August 20th through 29th. Right. But is that not in Northern Ireland? Ireland? No, that's the Republic of Ireland. Okay. And, you know, I used to, I don't know if Mill knows this, but, uh, you know, actually I sang in Northern Ireland a lot early on. And I've been speaking to my guy Andy again. I was hoping to maybe go do a couple of gigs up there this year, but I don't know if it's going to come through or not before I go on my Southern, you know, fun. It's fun music trip. Mm -hmm. It's a trip. It's just a fun trip uh, to the Republic of Ireland. But um, so I don't know. It's, you know, really when you go to Northern Ireland, um, well, it's just a different thing. You know, it's part of the UK, which not everybody's happy about that. And, um, and I feel like everybody should go. And some day, and sometimes on some of my fun trips, we've we've gone to Dublin first, and then we've and, and actually one day we some of us who wanted to go up into um, Belfast, we we took a bus and we went up to Belfast and we went on the. Uh, it was it was really great. And like I said, until I started doing the uh, fun tours, I was actually singing mostly in Northern Ireland. Okay. So it's we're working on it. Yeah, well, we're working on it. So the 2019 tour is sold out, but yes. there is a waiting list if somebody drops out, katecampbell.com. But you can go ahead and sign up for the 2020 Ireland tour, July 21st through 30th of and 2020. people are signing up for that already. And you know, y'all, I can only take like 23 people. Yeah. but and that'll, it's so much fun. It's just fun, y'all. It's just fun. And that'll be some time away from America during the, uh, the presidential election, which we'll probably need. <laughs> That's right. Amen. <laughs> okay. Debbie S. Williams has a really specific question. She wants to know, have you ever been to Antiques Week in Round Top, Texas? Because she thinks that you would love it and find countless songs there that are just waiting to be written. I have not been to Antiques Week. I know about it because I have dear friends uh, down, of course, in Austin, which is close to Round Top. Um, but no, I haven't. And also, my mama loved antiques, so I like antiques a lot. Uh, but no, I hadn't. I mean, and I was kind of thinking back on your catalog. You have written about a few items. I mean, did mm-hmm. you ever? I mean, there's well, we talked about Joe Lewis's furniture earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, what, you know, so are there items that kind of show up? Bud cement boat. Well, that was an, that, that was, was a real item, boat. right? Yeah. Um, well, every now and then, you know, I my mother had antiques, you know, in our house. Well, it wasn't just antiques, but my mother really, I think, had a lot of taste and and great taste in in antiques and stuff. And and my grandmother antiques as well. So. It's not that we went out searching for them and had, you know, like, oh, this is an expensive antique. But we had, in growing up, I had antiques in the house and probably got that from my mom that I, I enjoy that. Okay. You so. do, yeah, you do write about the chimes in the hall and the clock. Mm-hmm. Uh, was that a grandfather clock in my mother's house? Um, no, it wasn't. We never had a grandfather clock. That's surprising. I always, I always pictured in my mm-hmm. mother's house that being a grandfather clock. Mm-hmm. Like I saw in the process, right? You know, that might have been at my actually my grandmother's house. Okay, but you know, does she have a grandfather songs, clock? Yeah, you okay. know, the thing is, you know, the songs that everybody. I mean, there usually is a very specific reference, but then I, depending on the song, I pull in all different mm-hmm. kinds of references. Mm-hmm. Some are things that my grandmother told me, or my grandfather told me, or was in our house, or you know, I've found along the way. So I just mix mix and match because it brings up the reference point to me in, in my in my brain. We're gonna have to get you out to Antique Suite. Yeah, I know that would be so awesome. twenty twenty Northern Ireland Antiques and Round Week. Top and Round Top Texas. Empty out my truck so I can bring stuff back to Tennessee from Texas. <laughs> Uh, okay, moving on. Kathy J. Tate wants to know, what is your perfect day, quote unquote? How would it begin and end? 
Yeah, I know. I know, Kathy. Of course, we go way back. We won't talk about how far we go back. Um, I don't know. You know, y'all, I'm, I'm actually kind of lazy. I mean, I'm not a... <laughs> And I'm not really a very disciplined people. You know, throughout my life, it's kind of like, it would be nice if I got up and I walked every day. And I'm like, nah, don't do any <laughs> of that. I usually stay up late. and But a, a nice day for me is actually, I mean, usually every day I like to, you know, whenever I get up or whatever. And then I like, I usually do some reading in the mornings. And, uh, I mean, I have some, we used to call these, daily devotionals when mm-hmm. I was growing up. But, mm-hmm. you know, I read a variety of things. It's quiet in the house. And uh, make my t- me at least one cup of coffee. And uh, not having to be somewhere, like not having to pack the truck, not having to do anything, that would be, that would be the start of a perfect day uh, for me. <laughs> <laughs> not, not having nowhere to be. Nowhere to be, that's it, you know. And then I like to, uh, you know, I just kind of, you know, sometimes I read. I like to go to the library or bookstore. I like to do that Oh yeah. as the day goes. You know, also, if I have shopping to do, I'm a mall girl. I remember when Rivergate Mall was built here in Nashville, who, you know, the first, one of the first malls. And Harding Mall was another one. But anyway, uh, I like to, you know, do a little. I like to then go and have, and of course, I'm usually having lunch Mm mid-afternoon. So, because I sleep, sleep late or whatever. So, but again, that could be like going to Barnes & Noble or a bookstore. A a local bookstore is great. And again, just looking at books and then, you know, maybe an antique store if there's one next door. Uh, You know, having my having an afternoon latte or espresso and basically that's kind of my day you know Mm -hmm. but i'm a tv girl girl too i I always um had a dear friend many years ago um who i met and we lived we lived in san francisco for a while and he got the tv guide and so um ever so i used to get the hard like i used to like to go to kmart or walmart and get the tv guide or at the grocery grocery store now you you never subscribed or just bought I, I never subscribed. I just bought one because that was part of going. I love to go to the grocery store too, y'all. When I'm at home, I don't have anything to do. I like to go, you know, and I try to go to different grocery you stores. You live near a lot of great grocery stores. I do. Stores. They're all there within like mm-hmm. a mile. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like going on vacation to some yeah. of your grocery stores. So I make my little grocery list and, you know, and again, um, so I try to get the, the, the tricky thing about the life that I've led is that it, that it is hard to have a schedule and I actually do better with a schedule. So it's not that I'm a hard and fast schedule, but when I have not just one day, but if I'm at home for a week, I really like it. I try to say, okay, I'm going to wash my clothes this day. I'm going to get up and I'm going to go to the grocery store. You know, make my grocery list, and then I take my time at the grocery store. I don't like to run to the grocery store. I like to go in, look at all, ice, you know, follow my list, but you never know what you might get, you know, down any aisle, you know. Also, it's all, I mean, especially at the ones by your house. Right. You just don't know, and I love, like, like, if there's a new movie out, you can get, like, a plastic Avengers cup and the little kids. You know, I mean, I love lots of weird, uh, I like stuff like that if people, mm-hmm. you know. Chachis or whatever that word Chachis. is. Chachis. I like stuff like that. But yeah, it would be a very relaxing go to the grocery store. And then, of course, get, I have to look. Now I have to look at the TV guide on my on my iPad mini. Mm-hmm. So every day I look at the TV guide <laughs> and plan out my evening TV watching. Now, I don't watch much in, in the day unless it's sports. Okay. But I do like to watch TV at night. And I usually stay up. Because when I'm on the road, I'm up late. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I would say my average bedtime, unless I'm really tired, is probably, you know, between 12 and 1. Okay. And then if I'm not too tired, I'll do a little reading, too. So it's basically not having to be somewhere mm-hmm. at a certain time. So able to sleep in if I want, but basically lounge in my pajamas and then and then plan my day when I'm going to the grocery store and all that kind of stuff. You know who else I, just, I read likes to, when they go on vacation, not have anything planned like that? It's Barbra Streisand. Well, so, what's vacation? I know, no plans. You yeah. shouldn't have plans. <laughs> yeah, so that's a perfect day. I know it is. To see what happens. See what happens. All right. Now, I think we might have asked this before, but I want to revisit it. Um, Alex Bledsoe asks, your songs are so steep in literature and literary tradition. Have you ever tried writing prose or fiction? And I think we've asked this before, but I want to revisit it because I wanted to ask, did you ever, like in college or grad school, write prose or fiction? No. 
No, never did. No, I now remember I, asking this. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, um, and Alex is, is y'all, uh, a great writer. Uh, by the way, people should look up Alex Bledsoe. He has uh, written a series. So just everybody look up Alex Bledsoe and his series. And he used one of my songs as kind of inspiration okay. in one of his series. He's a great guy. And I follow him, obviously, on Instagram and stuff and love how he thinks and writes. And um, so, no, I've never written, you know, I love poetry, too, but I'm not really trained in that mm-hmm. way, you know. I'm, I when I wrote, I wrote as a historian. Okay. And really, the writing is in is in the songs, but I really do. Sense. Okay, so he, I, I do think that your your uh, songs are really rich for being adapted in into other forms of so books, miniseries. It'd be nice. I know. Crazy Please, in Alabama would be a great a great miniseries. We know a lot of people will know there was a book called Crazy in Alabama mm-hmm. when there was a movie called Crazy in Alabama, um, but which I did not read the book. I was a co write I think we've talked about it before, with Kenya Walker. Mm-hmm. And this is early on. I was writing for Fame. She was writing for Hay Street Music, which I don't even know if Hay Street, I don't think they're around anymore. But anyway, I hadn't read the book or... The movie or anything, you know, Kenya was kind of talking to me about it, and we just started talking about things that I care about, and we ended up writing cra- the song Crazy in Alabama. So that wasn't even – so sometimes I read a book, The Snake – Salvation on Sand Mountain, I read, and then I wrote Signs Following the Snake Handling Song. So – but I've never even, you know – when I was little, I wrote I wrote music from the beginning, and so it's, it's more my, st- my writing has been lyrics – together with the music but i've never even attempted to which of your songs would you like to be uh turned into a movie or book (laughs) let's think about a minute like an hbo netflix (laughs) miniseries well i think people could choose from several ones that that float their boat you know that they can they can take off just even by the questions that people ask me you know i think that a, a script writer or whatever could could get a hold to one of those and go, wow, you know, they could just start with one of them and probably go over where they wanted, you know. But a lot of the, the books that people think about, I mean, now, you know, I've written all kinds of civil rights songs. So some have been, the way I was able to structure them was because I read, obviously I read To Kill a Mockingbird and, and read uh, Eudora Welty and things like that. So it's usually... A line. Sometimes it's the title of the book or whatever, but then it's wherever my, you know, own personal background or why. I, for me to finish a song and for me to actually probably to ever write another kind of of writing, you know, a book or short story. I'd probably be most interested in short stories if I ever wrote anything. Maybe a collection of short stories, but um, is usually it involves me going. Why am I interested in that phrase or? When I read that book, what is it about that book? And I have to figure out why, why, how it's affecting me personally. And then that usually leads me to, oh, now I get it. This is why it's important to me. And then I usually write a song very quickly. Crazy. If that makes sense. That so does it, make it, sense. It, they kind of feed off each other. But I know people want to know. I wish I could write poetry because I love poetry. Well, you already do. You might write lyrics. It's a form. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a form of, of a way. But, you know, I love poetry. But, I mean, yeah. we could put that in a book. I mean, Bob Dylan, all of them, Dolly Parton, they've all come out with. Well, no, Dolly hasn't. But, you know, the lyric books are their lyrics. Well, people want me to, you know, what people want. And I, I promise y'all I'm working on it. You know, I've had many people and, and friends close to me. They want me to write a book where I tell the stories, a lot of them, behind the songs. And a lot of these I tell, if you come to a concert, you're going to hear some mm-hmm, of those. Mm-hmm. And again, I'm kind of interested in it, but I'm not that interested in it. I'm, I'm just kind of not kind of bored with my own self. But I mean, you know, if I ever do that, it will be some sort of probably writing where I have an interaction with the songs. The most interesting to me now, too, is that after all these years, some of these songs are very old, and how if I wrote a song 20 years ago, but sometimes while I'm singing the song now, there's a new event or something in my life, and I relate to the song. It's like something the song tells me that I never knew that that song could tell me, mm-hmm. especially 20 years ago when I wrote it, because I was a different person. Well, so been, to me, yeah. that's that's interesting thing to me, and that's pro- I probably am working on something like that, y'all. We'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I've been thinking a lot about Look Away. Uh, with uh, you know the South being in the news so much lately, 
And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, that, that line about that it stood for something more than hate, that's just been ringing in my head. And so that, mm-hmm. has that song taken on a new meaning for you lately? Well, yeah, because I can't believe, you know, I'm just, I think 30 years ago, speaking of Auburn and, uh, and, and my professor at Auburn, Wayne Flint, you know, history and studying history was a way for me to have this conversation with where I come from. Mm-hmm. And then that ended up being really for me, the songwriting was how I began to continue that conversation. And like the song Change Should Have Come By Now on the new record, that's how I'm relating to my, a lot of my songs now. I'm going like, why this am should, I still singing these same songs? This should be kind of a historical. You know, in, yeah. in in a perfect world, to, to quote another song, yeah. um, this would be yeah. like kind of looking uh, back. This would be like history and like making peace with the past. Mm-hmm. But it's like, yeah, it's in, past. It's, but we're, we're, you know, we still here. need to have this conversation because mm-hmm. I keep hoping that we're going to move beyond that. I mean, my dream, I think, as a Southerner, and what uh, first even drew me not just to history, but when I got to the history department at Sanford and then went to Auburn and then later on I was at Vanderbilt, is the music. Obviously, when I was a little girl, I wrote differently then. But as I grew and began to, to write, it is a way for me to have a conversation. So obviously, I'm still having this conversation. But it's, it's somewhat heartbreaking to me to sing some of the songs. Nothing against the songs. I'm just sad I'm still singing some of them. Yeah. <laughs> And that they have new meaning. And they have new meaning. Yeah. You kind of wish they didn't have new meaning. I, I kind of wish they didn't. Right. Um, a question from Kim Gilliam. Gilliam. Gilliam, right. I know uh, she wants to know, how are you and your family doing since the loss of your mom and grandmother? Well, it's, it's been kind of weird, I have yeah, to say. I have I mean, my moments. Because um, you lost them in quick succession. A week after each other. My Yeah. And my mother-in-law, you know, just died last year mm-hmm. uh, in Alabama. Um, well... It's it's been weird. I just have the I'm sure everybody that goes through the grief process is like this. But I find myself um it's really great this past weekend I did a house concert um over in uh North Carolina and my friend Laura Boosinger, who's a great banjo Joe player and runs the uh, Madison County um Art Center in Marshall, North Carolina and, and is um uh, she's the one who introduced me to the song Peace, Precious Peace, which is on the new recording. And um, I said, will you play with me tonight? Uh, and by the way, we had like 100 people, y'all. It, That's I awesome. love to do house concerts, so it, we can put that out there. Yeah, know, if you would I like to, to do book house concerts, Kate yeah. for a house concert, they, I think Kate they Campbell. work well com. for my music and what I do, and I love to do them. But Go anyway, reach out. I said, Laura, I was staying at Laura's, and we drove up um, to little Switzerland for the house concert. But so, said, Laura, we, we, and I just have felt, you know, you go through these motions. Anybody who has grief, you kind of go some days, and then at the weirdest times, you like could be at the grocery store or something. You just have this moment where you think about some very specific memory or whatever. But I mean, so we started working on the set list, and I kept crying, but we sang through everything, and it was such a really good just me and Laura before we went out to play Sunday night. And, and then I just felt like that was really good release for me. You know, me and Laura working on the songs, making the set list. And then when I got to the concert, it was, I think, you know, I stuck to the set list and it was a really meaningful night for everyone is is me too. So I have these moments where it's just kind of weird, Yeah, you know, like I said, you know, and I'll have a moment of, Oh my gosh. And and then it'll hit me. And, and then you just kind of, I've, I've been trying to just let it go, you know, just deal, you know, whatever I'm feeling at that moment, let it go. If I'm if I'm standing in the, in the Kroger, start crying, it's okay. Yeah. It's no big deal or just, you know, it's no yeah. big deal. So. I have space for the for yeah. the grief to come through and not try to, right. you know, steal up. And, and there's moments, too, let me say this, too, though, where I'm kind of, it's I'm trying to think of the word, but because my mother in particular... Um, you know, I don't, I don't know I, if we said this, on my, but my mother had dementia or Alzheimer's and really she hasn't been there for, you know, several years. So that was difficult. My grandmother, I was very close to, uh, but she was, she was 101. Yeah. She is, a, and, and, you know, I, wow, talking about an amazing woman. Mm-hmm. She, she was, 
But I have those moments, you know, where in some sense, I kind of lost my mother three years ago or Mm -hmm. whatever. But that's sad, sad in itself as well. But that's, that's kind of been an interesting process for me. Yeah, it keeps going on. Yeah, it's okay, though. We just kind of have to let it go. We just got to be there, be able to just let that I like this I like the image I have is just let it wash through me mm-hmm. just let it just like a wave and go it's okay yeah let it wash through me yeah, yeah. I do that you know uh, having, having lost my brother two years ago it's yeah. you know you just let it let it mm-hmm. go through and also just it's uh, it's great for, I heard somebody else say like it's really as time goes on it's great to talk about them and remember them because yeah. they don't you know people don't talk about them as much once they're gone it's so. like they're in the ne- never yeah. Land, whatever, you know. And also, you know, but that's another thing I love about people go, why don't you fly? I go, fly? Are you kidding? I'm, I'm a heart attack going to the airport almost now. It's so absurd with airplanes. But the driving for me, mm-hmm. which I've done all these years and I love, the times when I'm driving across America and it's just me talking about able to just mm-hmm. think and drive and. Yeah. have memories and have conversations and um that's why i drive so much people go why do you? i go because it's 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 a magical thing i think and you can have a coke whenever you I want i can have a coke whenever i want and stop at the bathroom whenever i want <laughs> that was my favorite quote from an earlier episode <laughs> final question of this round from d but uh d oh how do you say d how d. do you say her last name boutier selinsky <laughs> yep Okay. D. Salinsky, you can just say that. <laughs> well, I know I don't want to lo- lose that boutier. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she wants to know, are you tattooed yet? And you say. Well, what was You're going to plead the fifth. I'm going to plead the fifth. <laughs> okay. But I should give a shout out to D because I just got a really great, beautiful, um, cro- she crocheted a quilt with Elvis like the Elvis shadow thing, and it's awesome. Thanks, D. I just got it. Um, I just got home. It's awesome. We need a picture. We're gonna. What? Oh, I, yeah. I meant to, I should have done that. We'll take a picture. I'll take we'll, a picture we'll have a picture, and we you. can put it right here. We can drop it right in, so people we'll can it. be seeing it so, right now. And D can see it too. Okay, yeah. Hope, so I'll hopefully, if, I, home, if all goes well, you're looking at D's handiwork. That's right. It's cro. It's crochet too. My mama crocheted. She didn't really knit that much. I mean, she could knit, but she crocheted more than she knit. She chose to crochet. She chose to crochet. <laughs> How good does that sound? She chose, I chose to crochet. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank y'all. Go and uh, look at KateCampbell.com. And, and, and that was a really good idea. Book her for a house concert. They're my favorite things to do. And those of y'all who've had them, you know, and we can do them. How, it's your house. We make it work however you want to. Do it. That's what we do. (laughs) Okay. Thank you. Invite me over.